Uh, to move the motion. Um, I formally move the motion you, uh, about the pay and conditions of nurses, midwives and paramedics uh, in, in this country. So I want to begin by reading, uh, there's been a lot of messages circulating online and on the picket lines, of course, from nurses and midwives about why they were brought to take the unprecedented step for nurses of taking a national strike action. So uh, one woman who's a nurse for five years said, the education and respect that I got in the NHS when I emigrated was second to none. They constantly wanted progression for their nurses and even offered to pay for funding of college courses so we could up our skills. Unfortunately, I made the silly decision to move home, to which to this day I deeply regret. I've been forced to move back with my parents, which was a difficult decision to make. I'll never be able to afford a mortgage. I worked four long years in university to be where I am today. Why can't we have pay parity with other professionals we work alongside? Why can't the government respect us? I think it sums up many of the reasons and the sentiments that we heard uh, throughout the last couple of weeks. So the INMO have only in their 100 years of existence twice waged a national strike. Quite an unbelievable circumstance. It shows the urgency of the issue that they would be forced. It's anathema to nurses to have to leave behind patients that they know to uh, go on a picket line and it shows how far they've been pushed and how low they've been allowed go by this government. Now for weeks we listened to the government saying there was no money for nurses. For weeks they even said there was no recruitment and retention crisis at all. It was a figment of the INMO's imagination. Then they said it wasn't due to pay and that pay probably wouldn't make any more nurses want to stay in the country where their families and their friends are. But just in three days of industrial action, I think it should be registered here by uh, anybody who's watching this debate or interested in this issue. In three days, the INMO achieved more than years of the uh, rest of the trade union leadership for their members in the sense of an offer is on the table, which is obviously an improvement in the current situation. The question that nurses will be asking is, is it a fundamental change? Is it what nurses deserve? Or is it the government continuing to abuse the goodwill of nurses? There's no question that the government were absolutely desperate to avoid three more days of strike this week. They saw the huge public sympathy that there was for the nurses. And they saw, of course, on Saturday, a massive demonstration, quite unusual to have 40 to 50,000 people uh, marching to defend workers. And it was primarily the INMO and the public who used the health service, who uh, mobilised. It was people who know what it's like to be on a waiting list. It was people who know what it's like to wait in A&E. And it was people who know uh, and see where the government uh, is spending public money and in, in the uh, encouragement of private health care. So um, nurses and midwives are, as we speak, getting the information about this pay offer and they will have time to consider. Now, the issues that they've raised with us, because obviously we put this motion uh, before the, the deal was offered, but now we, we feel this is still a huge issue. And the issues that the nurses will be asking is, is it parity? Is it restoration? Will it stop the brain drain of young uh, qualified nurses? Will the wards be safer? Will it pay the rent? Will it buy a house? And some of the feedback that we've been getting from nurses is this. On the issue of pay parity, Minister, uh, and maybe you, you could explain. Uh, on paper, it can look like that there's parity with uh, other therapists and other grades who they've been fighting for. One of the issues, however, is that it's heavily dependent upon uh, an allowance. Now, we all know, and we saw this in the recession, the first thing to be taken off workers were allowances. We saw it with teachers, we saw it with other professionals. A bank manager does not count an allowance as part of your, you know, your wages as such. And also, allowances do not always apply to every single group, and there's question marks about this will apply to nurses in the community, 
Will it apply to nurses and outpatients and others? Um, but the other key issue is this, that occupational therapists and other therapists who they're seeking parity with, after four or five years, usually progress to become a senior OT or physio. There's no such progression, even in this offer, for nurses. Uh, they, they will still remain on the same pay scale. And just looking back on some of the, uh, say for a staff nurse, and Minister, you know, you should feel a bit of a shame and embarrassment about this uh, in terms of a staff nurse's pay. So in 2008, the starting point for a staff nurse was 31,875, and the scale went up to 46,541. Post this deal, the starting point is still 29,346, which is lower than 2008. And now the highest you can go on the enhanced scale is 45,841. So it would seem that despite winning, you know, uh, better pay, they still don't have the restoration that they absolutely should have uh, that was taken off them in the recession. The other issue is uh, what productivity is going to be asked of nurses because the general response of nurses is, you know, the cheek of Pascal Donoghue to come out and say that they must qualify to go on this scale when they've given absolutely all that they can give and there's no more that can be given. Um, and I think it shows the response of the government to the idea of workers having a recovery. I mean, you're bragging and boasting about the economy being in recovery, one of the best performing in Europe, but you're not happy for workers to get back what was taken away. Um, so, yeah, just to give an example, we constantly hear in the media, oh, there's no money, there's no wealth there. We have this little pie for the health service, and if nurses and paramedics get an increase, well, then something else will have to go in the health service. We completely and utterly reject that concept. There's a huge pie of untapped and untaxed resources in this uh, economy. We have the 14.3 billion sitting untouched uh, in the Apple account. Uh, the, we're, we're, we're told that the cost of the Labour recommendations will be 35 million in a full year, but the Apple money would pay that 400 times over 400 years. What greater demonstration is there of the interests of the government uh, working hand in hand with Apple to protect their uh, interests. Um, meanwhile, in terms of the cost of living for workers, the average national rent is 1,347. In Dublin, it's 1,800. The average rent uh, in Waterford has gone up 16%, in Galway, 13%, and in Limerick, 17%. You know, so that is what any wage increase has to compete with. In terms of wages, the average weekly earnings for workers in the health sector was 796 in 2008. Today, it is uh, 720. So I think workers will be looking at uh, the example that the nurses have been given and, uh, and you know, act accordingly. But I would ask you, Minister, there's going to be a debate on the National Children's Hospital. And if you contrast what has been spent and how the purse strings have been opened for that uh, in comparison to uh, the nurses, I have to say in every single picket line that I went in, and if you got into a conversation with nurses, it was invariably raised the question of gender. People said, and I know Phil Nihay raised this on the demonstration, is this because we're women workers that we are just so shoddily treated? But I've no doubt we'll see you on International Women's Day on March 8th talking about, you know, the advancement of women. But this is the gender pay gap in action and how it works. Because if you decimate the wages of female-dominated professions, such as nursing, teaching and many others in the public sector, that's what happens. That's how the gender pay gap goes down. And, uh, you know, you, you have to answer for that minister. I want to finish by saying uh, a word about paramedics as well because they are still in dispute with this government. Uh, they have had the, uh, the demand and the request to join a union of their choice, not of your choice, Minister, of their choice, something that is meant to be a right that workers have. 
to use whatever organisation or union that they wish to negotiate on their behalf. But it seems that this government would rather pick uh, you know, unions that they consider tame or under their influence or under their control. The uh, ambulance workers and paramedics, and we have nurses and midwives in the gallery as well, uh, that the Minister has just come in, should be allowed to join a union of their choice. And the, the HSC must be directed by you, Minister, to recognise NASRA as uh, the uh, negotiating choice of those workers. Just finally, nurses will assess in the days ahead whether this deal goes uh, as far as they wish. If they decide that no, it doesn't, that it isn't restoration, it isn't parity, and it isn't what they made the sacrifices for, and if they decide to vote no to this agreement, the whole trade union leadership and whole trade union movement <coughs> must get behind the nurses for the sake of them uh, as workers, but also for the sake of our health service, and must mobilise and support them completely, not leave them standing alone or on their own to end austerity throughout the public sector and also uh, to bring up the wages of all workers. It's time for a recovery after a decade of austerity.